Today we're going to be talking about the APRE, getting strong at their own pace. Uh, this is Dr. Brian Mann from the University of Miami uh, leading you through this once again. So I think we need to start off with a brief history of strength training. And the first thing we need to know is what is the most common strength training prescription for sets and repetitions regardless of exercise? And if you stop and you think for a second, uh, most people who are listening to this are going to say one of two things. They're going to say five sets of five or three by ten. And three by ten is the most common prescription uh, ever. And we need to know where did it come from? Because if we don't know our history, we are doomed to repeat it. It came from this guy. Now, this guy is Captain Thomas DeLorme, who is a uh, military surgeon. Uh, he dealt with femoral fractures. At the time, the treatment for femoral fractures was cast them up, let bone remodeling occur, and then you would cut the cast off and send them back out to active duty. Well, anybody who's been casted up knows that, hey, uh, there's a lot of atrophy that goes on. So there's a lot of muscle loss, there's weakness, there's a lack of proprioception, and just a lot of other things that, that happen as a result of immobility for an extended period of time. So as such, they were having poor returns to service, uh, you know, it, much like an ACL tear 15 years ago. If you had a femoral fracture, that was a death sentence for your military career. You were either going to be behind a desk or retired. Uh, so you know, he needed to find a way to keep people around. Well, he himself was a lifter. So he decided to start strength training the patients. Now, something interesting about Captain DeLorme here is, you see that he's got a good physical development, but one of the things that people don't often know is that he suffered a childhood illness that left him in bed and immobile and thinking that he would never be able to walk again, let alone uh, deadlift 500 pounds like he is in this, uh, this picture here, uh, which, like, wait, that doesn't look like 500 pounds. Well, guys, remember, this is the 1920s, so the barbells were not standard at this point. He was just lifting whatever he could find. And I have no idea what those plates are, uh, but I do need to credit the Stark Center and uh, Ms. Jan, Dr. Jan Todd uh, for the use of this, this photo. So he decided to put what he knew about strength training and how he recovered his own life to his patients. Now, they had a huge improvement in, in return to function. They were able to return to service, and they did quite well uh, because he knew what he was doing. Now, implementation, initially, he had three plates, and they just did leg extensions. And they were the plates, not like what we think of today, but a plate that was meant to be attached to your shoe. So he did two sets of 10 and one set for as many as he could that hopefully he would get 10 repetitions with. This is where three sets of 10 comes from because of what somebody had. So just remember that there are no magic sets and reps prescriptions. I, you know, 3 by 10, 3 by 12, 2 by 12, 1 by 20, uh, 2 by 8. Whatever it happens to be, make sure that it's applicable for the person and not just some random prescription. 3 sets of 10 is a great place to go to to start out with, but it's not the end-all and be-all. Now, we go from Delorme. And now we need to talk here for a second that uh, DeLorme the, called this the progressive resistance exercise protocol. These three sets of 10 where you progressively increase in load. As people like to call things by names uh, of people, this also became known as the DeLorme method. And all that that became synonymous with was that you sequentially use greater and greater loads. Now, there was another method called the Oxford method, where they did a light warm-up and began with heavy loads and then uh, worked progressively lighter. Uh, there was actually found to be no statistical difference between those two methods, but those were the two methods of the time. So now we would call it a pyramid and a reverse pyramid. Now, this PRE that DeLorme came with was changed uh, by a guy named Kenneth Knight to be called the DAPRI. Now, it, the DAPRI 
is still a commonly used protocol in athletic training and in uh, physical therapy, and it's simply a derivation of the Gilmore method. Uh, again, a, a guy named Kenneth Knight took it, and he just added to it. Now, Delorme initially called it the PRE, or Progressive Resistance Exercise. And what Dr. Knight wanted to do was keep what was, uh, was Delorme's, because he didn't feel like he made something new, he just made his better. And he added on a little bit to it. So we wanted to keep that PRE, an homage to Delorme, and just add the D and A before that. And that means Daily Adjustable Progressive Resistance Exercise. So what Knight had done is he added a fourth set, so a second working set, and he added an adjustment chart so that different people were not going to be going off of their gut and giving completely different prescriptions. So in 1984, so the first two came out in 74 and 78, and then in 1984, Knight added in a 6RM protocol just for fun, right? Let's see what happens if we do sets of 6 instead of 10. Well, we had seen... that there were linear relationships, a, a direct linear relationship. It was a straight line going up at a 45 degree angle for improvements in strength and improvements in hypertrophy uh, on that 10RM protocol. So the you, you gained equal strength and equal hypertrophy as you got stronger from using the 10RM, which is if we think about the 10RM and where it fits on the repetition uh, protocols and seeing what things develop, we see that 10 reps is a fair for strength and it's excellent for hypertrophy, so we could see how that would happen. Now with the 6RM protocol, we see that strength far outweighed hypertrophy as far as their improvements go. It was not a nice 45 degree angle. If uh, strength were the vertical axis and hypertrophy were the horizontal axis, the line would be going nearly up. It would probably be at about a 70 or 80 degree angle because you gained far more strength than you gained in hypertrophy. Then came the APRE. Uh, while it was debated whether it was Sif or Verkoshansky who came up with it, uh, recent research that I have done found the first edition of Super Training. Uh, which was only by Yuri Brochansky, and Mel Siff was not involved at all, and the APRE was in that. So we will say that it was most likely Brochansky who got a hold of it and, and, and changed it. And he applied it to the big exercises. By big exercises, I mean the big rock fundamental type exercises like squats, bench presses, deadlifts, um, possibly some of the Olympic lift variants. And he decided that he was going to drop the D because it wasn't daily anymore. They were not doing maximal squats or maximal deadlifts every day and possibly even multiple times a day. That wasn't feasible with the type of training that they were doing. So he dropped the D and changed the A from adjustable to autoregulation. So autoregulation or autoregulatory progressive resistance exercise. And notice that they still kept that homage to Delorme. He also added in a three rep protocol to go in along with the six and the 10. The 10 was for hypertrophy, the six was for base strength, the three was for either maximal strength or power depending on the movement and intent with which it was implied. Here's where I step in. Uh, in 2002, uh, let's just be honest, I, I get bored quite easily. And I had done many different programs with uh, sets, reps, intensities, et cetera, with uh, my different sports. I was seeing stagnant improvements for soccer, field hockey, and softball, and I decided I wanted to try something new. Because if I'm only making 6, 10, uh, 15 pounds of improvement in a 1RM over a five-week period, why don't I try something different? Now, why did I pick those sports? Well, because at the time, you would not be in trouble if teams did not see improvements in those sports. They were ones that you could experiment with. So I had done it on myself a little bit, and I noticed that I was seeing some fairly decent strength gains. Uh, then I decided that I'm going to go ahead and I will do this with uh, some of these other sports that are lesser trained, thinking that they might see a bigger adaptation. So I am in 
implemented the EPRE instead of the traditional linear periodization, uh, which is a, a misnomer. Really, it was just a uh, linear progression. Uh, and at the five-week point of using the APRE instead of the traditional programming, my athletes were doing six to eight repetitions with their old 1RM. So I never looked back. I saw that this was a fantastic way of improving strength. We could push it whenever we had more gas in the tank. And on the days that they didn't, we held back, and they naturally held themselves back.